Greetings, my name is uh, Minas Dastigenis from the University of Western Macedonia, Faculty of Engineering, Department of Informatics and Telecommunication Engineering. I'm a lecturer of this department at Embedded System Design. Today I'm going to show you the importance of security. As you may know, I have been teaching the mandatory course of web programming on uh, my department and also I have been supervising diploma thesis about constructing websites and connecting them with embedded devices. In all my courses and the diploma thesis I have been stretching the importance of security. Security in every aspect. Today I'm going to show you something about website security. As you may know, security on websites can be enforced by the server, so it's a server-side security, by the client, which is the web browser, or both. The correct way, of course, is to use, to use, to use both security considerations. So you have also server-side security and also client-side security. If you only have client-side security, this can be circumvented, which means that you can gain access to unauthorized content, content that you have not bought, but you can read all this information. So, uh, purely for educational reasons, I'm going to show you why client-side security on only is something that you should avoid. Today, I have visited the spectrum.ieee.org website, the flagship of the IEEE community, that posts interesting articles about technology, trends, and so on. This is a site that uh, I visit very often in order to be informed uh, about the technological advances on my f f fields of interest. Today I received a post about the top 10 programming languages, posted 20 July. Today is this uh, date, and I read this article it gives a glimpse about what it can be accessed behind this by paying a fee of 99 US cents and gives a small uh, screenshot of what is what you will get if you pay this so if you if we try to access this web application that you, you can buy it for 99 cents. You see that some elements of the article appear and suddenly appear a, a message to the user that you have not paid this. This can be bought for 99 cents and you can access fully this application. As we can see this is um, a div element, a text element that is over the previous page because we can see f very faint in the background that it has uh, interactive and so on so the text appears behind this but it's unreadable of course you cannot access, you can see that there is something behind but you cannot do anything about it. The thing is that this is a, a div element on top of the other divs. And as I have been teaching all these years, div elements can be manipulated so I always told my students never to rely on JavaScript and CSS 
and other codes that are to get executed locally. This can be all changed and with uh, bro modern browsers like Google Chrome it can be done without the need of any plugin. If we go to Options, Tools and bring up the grammar tools we can see on the Elements paint the source code of this. So if uh, we hover our mouse pointer over an element we can understand the location of this element. For example here we can see that there is a back to top link. We can see that this appeared on the rendered web page and so on. If we search this code we can find many divs. This code has many divs but we can easily imagine that the div that carries the name, the class overlay tp reset div is the div that is over all the web pages. We can see on the CSS of this that it has a um, 100% width starts from coordinate 0, 0.0, it's a block element and has a z index of 99999 which means it's this is over everything else so what can we do? we can change many things, let's say we can change the width by putting 0% of the width this has disappeared. We can read the web page. We can uh, even uh, interact with the web page. We can press the button. To, uh, we have full access to this. We have not changed anything on the server. So if we put refresh, the CSS will be loaded and the app is uh, here as we can see. So by manipulating the pane of here the CSS, it's the local settings, the web uh, web browser, our web browser settings. Another that we can change is the usually the z index, even though we can change the width, if we put z sometimes z index another value, let's say uh, another value, we can stand in the background, but we can see now that both texts appear which is um, uh, not so user-friendly as the previous solution. Again, we have the full access of the web page, we can click, we can access it and so on. So, what is the conclusion for this? We should never rely just on client server client side security. This page should for example this page should also be protected by web server security. So the web server will check if the user was authorized to read this content and if it was authorized then it will send the text and all the images and graphics uh, CSS to the client otherwise uh, it should send only the pop-up that you should buy this article but it does not operate like this as we saw um, the server sends everything to the client and by some JavaScript the client the web browser uh, shows this uh, pop up. Again uh, we can see that if we refresh this page nothing is altered the server, everything is done on my local web browser, no plugins, no tools, nothing a single web browser can be used to circumvent the client server security. So about security be very careful and rely on server side security not on client side, not on client side. This is of course purely for educational reasons and the owners of this website have been already informed about this and um, were given a, a number a reasonable time allotment to make any proper changes in order not to uh, 
to have any cost implications. So that's for now and uh, be careful with security.